Hi, and welcome to Lesson 9 E-Commerce. Congratulations, we are in the home stretch as far as our intro series goes. So if you've been with me the entire time, thank you very much. I really appreciate that you've trusted me to help you learn this material. Hopefully you've clicked subscribe and liked on those videos as we've gone through. Don't forget the like actually helps us with our ratings and our search as far as results go. Uh, another thing that's occurred to me as I've been developing them is that a lot of schools also require you to know different Microsoft Office products, for example, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, etc., etc. And one of the ideas that I had is if these videos are successful, if they get out there and I have a lot of views, is to start making Microsoft Office videos as well. But time will tell whether or not that you guys out there want those. So without further ado, let's begin talking about a topic that's actually very near and dear to me and that would be e-commerce. Now, the topic itself is kind of boring um, as far as we have to introduce certain terms and we have to cover basic stuff. We really don't get into how to do e-commerce, which to me is the exciting part because that's where the money's at. Uh, but we have to understand the basics of what we're talking about here. So then later on, you can become multimillionaires by exploiting and using e-commerce. So let's talk about some basic terms here. And as you can probably tell, there's only two videos here. This is a very short topic. It's one of those quickly into the deep end because we go from basics to actually developing e-commerce, which is, I'm still figuring that part out. Anyhow, e-commerce, also known as electric commerce, you might see the E hyphenated or you might see the little E, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we love to put E's in front of things to call it electronic or what have you. So electronic commerce, you might also hear it called e-commerce or e-commerce defined as the trading in products or services conducted via computer networks. It doesn't have to necessarily be the internet, but we're talking about conducting transactions, buying, selling, exchanging goods, services via computers, technology of somehow. And there are three basic types of e-commerce. And the reason why I went when I said that is because depending on who you read, they will subdivide these into further and further and further groups. So our basic three are business to consumers, otherwise known as B2C, consumer to consumer, C to C, and business to business, B to B. The first one is probably what we most are familiar with, and that is business to consumers. This is where you have a business connected directly to the consumer, consumer being us who are out there buying products. And so the business talks to you directly. It communicates with you directly. You're buying directly from that business. You might also hear this called e-tail, depending on, or with that little hyphen, you might hear e, the hyphen tail, or just e-tail. Either way, it's still e-tail. And some examples of e-tail are, of course, Amazon. Everybody knows what Amazon is. We have another one. This is Uncommon Adornments, and this is a free plug. They are a little jewelry place. They do the Renaissance festivals, and they do the local one here in Plantersville, Texas, and they are phenomenal. In fact, every year, that's the first booth. We, we go in, and my wife takes me to the booth first thing, right off the bat. Um, if you have a ladies or gentlemen, if you have allergic reactions to earrings, I'm telling you, they are amazing. Uh, my wife has no bad reactions to them. They make some pretty good products, and they're very reasonable. So be sure to check them out. Again, free plug, believe in the product. And of course, the next one, another great B2C site is Mr. Ford's Class. They are amazing. They're phenomenal. They're fantastic. They're the best B2C out there. Be sure to check them out. Um, but my own site, this is how I make my money when I decided to leave the uh, government world of government contracting. I, I did my own website. I have my own website. It's a membership site. In fact, if you ever have to take anatomy and physiology, be sure to check that out. I have a very low monthly membership website. It's like $15 right now per month. And that's how I make the majority of my pay my bill money. But it's a business to consumer site. They have really changed the landscape. Now, let me tell you a little story here. Amazon and online shopping has very much changed how we shop. For example, um, if you ha don't have the application yet on your phone, I would definitely check it out. It's a free application. It is, let me pull mine up here. It is the Amazon price check. Put that to the screen. The Amazon price check. And what you can do with the Amazon price check is you go to a store and you scan the item. Now, shop uh, stores hate this. In fact, some stores have banned it. Yeah, okay, whatever. But 
stores hate this. And one of the reasons why they hate it is because you can scan the item and find out how much you can pay for that same item through Amazon. And uh, two stories for you. One was at Best Buy, and I have warm feelings for Best Buy. In fact, I used to work for Best Buy years and years ago. In fact, I was on a tech bench fixing computers before it became the Geek Squad. And I was at the Best Buy here in Humble, the back of Humble, and was having a not very pleasant customer experience. And so I went to go talk to the general manager. Never underestimate the power of talking to a manager, by the way. I went to talk to the general manager and explained the difficulties I was having. I couldn't find a sales associate. And you know what? While I was waiting, I found the printer, and I pointed it to the printer. It was over there several times about how I found it cheaper on Amazon than they had it in the store, and that's what I'm going to do. Found out that Best Buy now matches Amazon's prices. Now, we're not talking about some of the offshoots of Amazon, but Amazon itself. If you're at Best Buy, scan the item, okay? If Amazon has it for less, Amazon itself, again, not one of their smaller mom and pop places, but Amazon itself, if Amazon has it cheaper, Best Buy now matches that price. And so you get to walk out of the store with a cheaper price. In fact, for me, the printer was $50 less than if I hadn't showed them the price. Now, here's the flip side of this. Barnes & Noble. And if you work for Barnes & Noble, if you know anybody at Barnes & Noble, be sure to pass this message to them because it's important. I was at Barnes & Noble about two weeks ago. And I typically, by the way, I love Barnes & Noble. Uh, for Christmas, if you buy me a Barnes & Noble gift certificate and a Best Buy gift certificate, I'm set. I'm happy. I love Barnes & Noble. I spend a lot of money at Barnes & Noble. Anyhow, I was at Barnes & Noble, and I had a little, you know, the little hand carts, and it was full of books. In fact, it was over $200 worth of books. Now, I wasn't going to buy them all. In fact, I usually go to the books and find which books I want, and I leave the rest, and they reshell them. And I was, I had about $100 worth of books. Now, we're talking textbooks and computer books, so we're not looking at like 20 books here. But I had about five or six books that I was going to purchase, and it was over $100 worth of purchasing that I was going to do. And I was prepping for this video. And so I was like, you know what? Let me let me scan them. One of the books was a guerrilla video making guide, how to do independent movies, things like that. It's kind of the bug bit me. And so I really want to make some independent movies. And the book that was in front of me at Best Buy, or excuse me, at Barnes & Noble was $40. The book through Amazon was $20. Now, I don't like math. I'm not a math person, but it doesn't take a math genius to figure $20 is a lot less, some would say 50% less, than a $40 book. And I scanned the other books while I was at it, and every book was a couple bucks off, $5 less, $10 less. And so I'm sitting there, and I'm going, maybe Barnes & Noble matches Amazon prices. I mean, you, if you follow Barnes & Noble at all, you'll learn that Barnes & Noble is getting really in financial issues. Uh, they're trying to prevent from doing what Borders did, which would be close their doors. So I went to the cashier and said, hey, do you guys price match Amazon? And the answer was no. And so I left the hundred some odd dollar purchase behind and walked out, ordered through Amazon. I have Amazon Prime, got my books two days later. So uh, it's changing the face of shopping. E-commerce is changing the face of shopping. And brick and mortar stores that figure that out and adapt will survive. And stores that don't adapt, <clears throat> Barnes & Noble, will not survive. So as a consumer, you definitely want the best price. You want your money to go far. And this e-commerce thing has made it possible. Okay, so the next one is consumer-to-consumer -consumer shopping, C to C. This is when you as an individual sell to another individual directly. Uh, you see online stores, online auctions, for example, eBay. You see eBay. This is consumer to consumer. You have this product. You're selling it to another consumer. So it's consumer to consumer. Craigslist is another example of consumer to consumer. Teachers Pay Teachers, which I talked about earlier. I do have a storefront there. And Cafe Press, where you can make different things and sell them to people. So this is consumer to consumer. The next one is business to business. Business to business is when a business sells directly to another business. So we're taking a look at massive volumes of stuff being sold. For example, raw 
supplies, basically think supply chain. So for example, if you're a computer manufacturer, you're buying products from other companies. So you might be, for example, Dell, and you might need motherboards made by Intel. Well, you're buying directly from Intel. You're buying directly from AMD. You're buying directly from whoever else is making motherboards. So it's a business to business transaction. Major or not major, but massive um, quantities are typically sold there. A variation of a B2B, a business to business, would be something called business to government or B2G, where the government is buying directly from that business. Okay, our next video, we're going to take a look at e commerce technologies. We're going to talk about money and how e commerce works as far as some of the back end. So be sure to tune in for that.